Hello, hello, more dimmers here and welcome to another game from round 7, uh, Tata Steel Chess Tournament in Vegan Zine 2020. And today I would like to cover the game by uh, Fabiano Caruana. Fabiano Caruana is the second strongest uh, player in the world and his actual ranking 2822, uh, he is just behind Magnus Carlsen. Uh, so really, really great player. An actually interesting fact, uh, he is American, but half American, half Italian. And he born, uh, he was born in uh, Miami, in Florida, and then raised in Brooklyn. And then the, some after school program, chess program found that he is talented. Uh, so he got extra training and he played for American team of um, you know, juniors. And then when he was 12, he moved with family to Madrid and then he uh, pursued a professional chess career and then started to play also for Italy from 2005 until 2015. Uh, interesting that in Madrid he stayed at three years, he learned everything he could there and then he moved to Budapest in the age of 15. And then when he was 18, he moved to Lugano in Switzerland. So he spent another four years there. And then when he was 22, he moved to St. Louis in, in USA, uh, two very famous now uh, St. Louis uh, chess club. So yeah, very cosmopolitan approach to his professional career. And Caruana is also known as one of the hardest working um, players. And uh, he always say that thousands of, of games are played every day and we just have to reach them and found, uh, find the ideas. But that's, uh, you know, incredible amount of time to do that. But he somehow is, is en enjoying do that. And he's 28 years old, very, very um, experienced player. And he when he was young, he played very aggressively, but then he figured out but that uh, playing aggressive is is fun, but it's not always lead to win. So uh, it's good to have initiative. Now he's very flexible, very universal player. So he can play uh, a lot of kind of positions, a close position, you know, strategic position, tactical uh, stuff, all, all is he's very universal um, player. And uh, definitely favorite of this game because he play against Daniel Dubov. And Daniel Dubov has more points so far in this tournament. Uh, but now he's facing uh, Fabiano Caruana. And I told you and I show you already the games of Daniel Dubov uh, here. He playing uh, also great chess. Uh, and, and then usually they, they are, these are decisive games. And his ranking is 2683. So let's see what happened on the board. Caruana opened with e4. We have c5, Sicilian defense, knight f3, knight c5, and bishop b5. So Nezmedino Rosolimo attack, g6, Fianchetto variation, and now we have castle by uh, Caruana. Bishop g7, c3, knight f6, and rook e1. Now we have castle by Dubov and now it's interesting stuff. d4 was played and this position happened twice during the same round because Carlsen and Anand play exactly the same position but Carlsen st start with a6 and after a6 um, Interesting thing happened, uh, but not in uh, Magnus Carlsen favor. Uh, so traditional approach by Dubov is much better. D5 was played, E5, and at that game Magnus Carlsen had to move um, knight to um, E8 and then re remaneuver to C7 because this bishop was already on the uh, very strong diagonal here. So. That would be very, very complicated and probably better uh, for white. Uh, but in this position, knight e4 is uh, totally natural. And in this position, we have bishop on e3. So strengthening the center, keeping some uh, pressure. Queen b6 with the same idea. And now we have bishop on c6 because bishop is under attack. And the main idea in this line would be defending that bishop, um, but Caruana decided to take the knight, bishop on c6, and now we have queen c1. Idea is to exchange the fianchetto bishop, 
and um, that's uh, pretty standard uh, for this kind of uh, structures and now we have rook on b8 attacking b2 twice so b3 is played and queen a5 with the idea of uh, exchanging the rooks by fancy way and um, d on c5 was played rook b3 so that's that fancy way a takes on b3 and queen takes on a1 and now we have b4 before cons consolidating the the pawn structures on the uh, on the queen side and now we have queen a4 as queen was very unhappy on a1 that's definitely the corner is not definitely a good square for the queen now we have knight on d4 and bishop on e5 so b so so literally this pawn was sacrificed because um this knight uh, was preventing from capturing uh, and what's the idea idea is pretty interesting look at this f3 first and here this knight has nowhere to go so f6 is the only square and now uh, this position was rich before and uh, knight on d2 knight b3 was the the plan before but queen a3 exchanging the queens first by caruana which is uh, pretty interesting now this bishop is stuck in the center and he belongs to you know g7 but can't go there uh, we have rook on e8 and now we have bishop g5 bishop g5 attacks the uh, the bishop on uh, e5 and this bishop actually uh it's not good to defend that bishop because f4 can be pushed but also if that happen also knight c6 can be played first so a uh, very unpleasant position for black uh, probably losing position so and that's not the the great idea also black would move the bishop sub somewhere deep there but uh, this bishop would stay in the cage so um daniel dubov decided to give the pair of bishop and uh, fix the structure of caruana's pawn so um that was something he actually he had to do but he's still pawn up so uh, let's see how the game continues king g7 and now b5 so uh, pushing the pawn on the queen side and this pawn can be uh, pretty dangerous we have bishop on d7 uh, so now um, this pawn is uh, attacked twice with support of the bishop so something has to be done and Caruana could go for, uh, you know, push the pawn and exchange and, and enjoying this passed pawn, uh, you know, um, and trying to do something, especially he has the dark square bishop. Uh, so maybe that would be the way, but he decided to play a different line and he uh, took on c6. So we have bishop takes on c6, bishop d2. Uh, and now we have a6 bishop d2 to prevent uh, black from advancing the pawn too fast and uh, black pawn is moved on the light square so can't be attacked easily by dark square bishop we have knight c2 bishop b5 consolidating the position here we have rook a1 and now knight d7 we have knight on b4 so attacking the a6 pawn twice but also attacking a d5 pawn so we have um, d6 uh, supporting this pawn on d5 by dubov so bishop f4 first controlling this diagonal and especially these two squares and now we have rook on a8 rook a5 uh, stopping the pawn from being pushed and now we have knight b8 uh, so controlling also uh, the c6 square so white can't advance now we have g4 a very important move and uh, with plan g5 controlling and uh, stopping the black on any counterplay on the king side we have king f8 king f2 so bringing the kings to the game king e8 and now we have g5 as planned and knight d7 uh, was played so giving the the square on c6 uh, but the plan is to move f6 and creating something on the uh, king side as well we have bishop on c7 
and now we have f6 as planned but h4 uh, was played by Caruana so now uh, black has to deal somehow with that rook on a7 attacking the bishop bishop goes on d6 and now we have rook back to a8 king e3 so centralizing the king even more and here dubov just doesn't have much uh, much much to play uh, so he go for king on f7 first f4 king g7 so having the plan of uh, doing everything he can on the king side before he go and uh, try to make some blockade on the queen side uh, king d2 by caruana and now we have h h5 as planned king c3 so uh, white king is uh, very fast king f7 so the same for dubov he tried to bring the king back and now we have knight on d3 bishop c6 by black and uh, king b4 so approaching rook a7 um, rook a7 because it's possible to uh, check the king now and kick him away uh, and it was impossible to do that from um, b8 square so we have rook a3 and rook a3 actually it's the move which gives the extra spot for the for the king so uh, that would be a pretty interesting approach. So it was very important to deliver this check. However, Dubov play king on g7 and that's not really great. And let's see what would happen after king a a5 right away. We would have rook b7, knight b4, so sealing this line. Uh, so rook can't approach, bishop b5, c6 now, so it looks like the double attack and then winning the, 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 the piece. But after bishop c6 and knight c6, we would have rook on b5 check. And um, there is the only, if, if king goes on uh, a4, then it's definitely checkmate. So white has to be very careful here. Uh, so they would have to take on a6 of course and after rook b6 uh, uh, black can win back the material and take the rook uh, however white can play actively on b7 and after moving rook to d6 uh, white can take back the the material and after king f7 uh, everything is uh, okay and it's probably very very drawish and it's nothing can be done black has extra pawn uh, but more active white king um, it's some advantage but it's nothing more than draw uh, probably black has counterplay with uh, with this line and can pick up all these pawns so um, difficult situation for white so only the draw that that's all they could um, achieve here this is why knight c7 was played in this position with the plan of moving the knight um, to you know to the queen side we have king back to f7 and knight on b3 as planned bishop b5 so sealing the uh, the fortress and we have knight on a5 rook a8 uh, c6 so pushing that pawn now and now we have knight on b6 c7 so this pawn is uh, pretty dangerous now and um, dubov before approaching with the with the king he decided to you know close the king side uh, uh, for the rest of the game uh, however caruana first what he did is rook e3 so uh, pointing the weak pawn on e6 so the king can't play it very easily there so we have rook c8 first now we have knight on b7 and now watch this can be actually approached twice so this pawn on e6 can be attacked knight c4 was played by dubov but if he try for example bishop on d7 to defend that pawn uh, then bishop c5 would be played uh, attacking the knight knight c4 uh, and anyway knight d6 um, forking the king and this bishop and this knight king g7 knight c4 dc4 uh, bishop d6 and king f7 and king c4 and white would stand much much better so um, not not really a big difference 
So knight c4 is, is definitely uh, understandable and in this position. And here knight on d8 with check uh, is the, the best move for, for white. Uh, for example, king on a8 and rook takes on e6. We would have king d7, so uh, sacrificing the piece, but rook g6 and then extra pawn, um, passed pawn on the king side would be winning. For example, knight on d6, delivering the check, king e8, king c5, bringing the king um, inside, knight e4, king b6 now, so coming for the rook, and knight d6, not allowing to do that. And now g6 and it's actually all over. Uh, the, the pawn will just, you know, promote to the queen. Even king come to f8, then we would have knight on uh, e6. So king have to go back to e, uh, e8. And now king c5 uh, attacking the, the knight now. So knight has to be moved somewhere. Uh, but now we have king on d5 and everything is collapsing. Uh, white king can even, you know, come and then do whatever wants here. Even have some mating ideas here. So uh, very dangerous situation for black. Uh, definitely, uh, definitely the best uh, way to win by white. However, Caruana in this situation play rook on e1. So uh, slower approach. Uh, we have bishop on d7 now, so um, taking care of this e6 pawn now. And we have, of course, king c5. Uh, king e8, and now bishop e5. And here is the last moment where black could try to create the fortress. For example, bishop b5, and yes, they sacrifice the exchange after king d7 and taking on c8. So try to find now the way for white to, to approach. Uh, this knight actually is uh, making a really great wall for the white king. This bishop is helping and both of them are on the light squares. So untouchable by any other piece than the rook. So uh, white wouldn't probably sacrifice the rook and um, really really difficult uh, way to 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 win here yeah so that's probably was the last chance for black however black play king on f8 another passive move with uh, not really great idea we have rook on a1 so sticking to the plan uh, however here uh, knight on d8 it still works it's still okay for example, a knight on e5, f on e5. Now, rook on c7, yes, uh, but king d6 would come. Rook a7, uh, so moving, uh, and now knight takes on e6, bishop takes on e6, uh, king takes on e6, and now black would have only a5. This is the only counterplay, but it's uh, way too slow. For example, king f6, a4, king g6, and it's all done. a3, king f5, uh, so everything, white king, king can clear up everything. Uh, white rook can just, uh, you know, be passive here, but with so many pawns uh, ahead, then that would be uh, actually an uh, easy win. So... Uh, so yes, in this position, knight to d8 also were winning, but rook a1 was played by Caruana. We have bishop on b5, bishop on d6 with check, king e8, and now knight on a5. And this is probably last chance for Dubov to try to uh, draw that game. For example, knight on a5, exchanging the knights, and now king d7, uh, bishop e5, rook a8, so some waiting moves, king b6, rook c8, king b7 approaching, but what next? Rook e8, rook a1, and now bishop c6 check. It's possible even to uh, check the king because this pawn can't be actually taken uh, because after rook then uh, actually white would be the, the one who lose the game. So uh, still possible to set up some traps. Uh, king on uh, a7 
and bishop on b5 and uh, it's impossible to to actually approach um, black position so uh, that was probably last chance for some kind of defending ideas uh, however in this position knight d2 was played so dubov said okay i don't want to exchange these knights i i, I like my knight bishop e5 was played king d7 king b6 so uh, stick to the plan and now we have knight on c4 with check uh, so exchanging the knights but not in the great way actually it looks better because uh, black now has the the pass pawn uh, so have some counterplay and it looks like um, uh, having the counterplay would be better but uh, Having fortress actually uh, much solid would, uh, in this case, would be much better. So uh, king on c5 was played, rook on e8. Caruana answer with rook on d1 and trying to push the d pawn. Uh, but we have bishop on a4 attacking that rook. So rook goes back to a1 attacking the bishop. Bishop goes back to um b5 and now rook a2 R rook a2 is um you know s improving the position uh switching the the ranks and now white rook can approach um, d file from the dark square so can't be disturbed and now we have king c8 and king c8 actually gives um, d6 square to uh, to white but what else could be played for example rook on c8 does it work d5 e takes on d5 king takes on d5 rook on e8 um, so trying to control the e6 square uh, but still rook d2 and now uh, for example king c8 king c5 rook g8 uh, king b6 and black cannot defend both sides for example the plan for white would be uh, rook go on d6 and attacking the uh, g6 pawn uh, so that's the one idea so this rook would have to stay there like forever and uh, once the rook is there also the bishop can approach to f6 and you know get some checkmating ideas on d8 so very dangerous for black this is why they decided to play um, king on c8 and now we have king on d6 king b7 bishop f6 king c8 and now uh, you know creating this pair of pawn and the bishop and yes bishop works as a pawn here uh, but still controlling a uh, couple of important squares king b7 black has nothing else to do king e5 so now coming for the king side um, side but now we have rook on f8 now rook a3 rook a3 is the move where uh, first of all uh, black has to do something but also uh, in some scenarios this pawn can be pushed so uh, white don't let that to happen so they can uh, pick up this pawn immediately now we have king on c8 king on e6 now can be taken freely rook on e8 and now king f7 attacking the rook attacking the g6 pawn and now we have uh, first uh, freedom time for for dubov uh, for a long long time it's already 69 moves and the last at least 40 moves he he was in a defensive stance so now rook on e4 is like wow can have something but of course black stands much much worse here king g6 we have rook f4 king h5 and rook d4 so now everything is uh, clear up how to win that game g6 was played so first rook on d6 was played hoping to pick up this this pawn for example if it's pushed then a bishop on e8 um, check king g5 and rook can come on the g5 square and after exchanging this uh, pawn would fall so that was the uh, the first plan but of course king g5 was played and now rook d3 rook d3 it's another sneaky move uh, now g7 was played and now c3 
And there is a little trap set up by Dubov. Uh, if the uh, you know pawn is uh, promoted, then rook could come to g3. And now after king on f5, the queen would be taken. And quite some chance for, for a draw um, for Dubov. So that was his um, last try. And now we have king on f5. So um, definitely Caruana is too experienced. He don't want to, you know, risk any, uh, any strange variations and counterplay. Uh, so now we have rook on g3 attacking this uh, pawn. And now bishop on g5 blocking the way um, for the rook. So bishop has to go on c4. Rook takes on a6, so uh, actually the rook of course can't be taken because of promotion, uh, so that's impossible. And now we have c2, so this pawn is very close to promotion, however, this bishop not only preventing uh, from taking this pawn, but also keeping an eye on c1. And now we have rook on c6. And here a Dubov play bishop on b3 and after h5 he just resigned the game. He resigned the game because, um, okay, these squares are, uh, you know, um, controlled uh, mutually by both sides, uh, but nothing can stop this pawn from advancing, so uh, that's uh, actually impossible. But I see one more line to check now. Uh, I haven't prepared that before, but what would happen in, if in this position, for example, a rook would take on g5 with check. Uh, so for example, h on g5, now promotion to the queen, which is uh, quite interesting. Uh, and now promotion as well to the queen. Bishop takes on g8. And now just rook takes on c1. So uh, white would win um, anyway, and that would be just um, just another variation of losing way for black. So yeah, uh, this game was quite long, uh, quite difficult for me also <laughs> to comment. I did my best. I hope you enjoyed that. And um, yeah, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.